Our guest today is Professor Armstrong Idachaba. He is the Acting Director General of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC. He holds a PhD in Media Studies. He was at some point the head of the Department of English and Theatre Arts at the College of Education, Ankwa in Kogi State. He was also a feature writer at the Nigerian Voice newspaper before moving on to become an artist and presenter at Nigeria Television Authority, NTA Makodi, where he rose to become the director of movies, theatre promotions. He joined the NBC as an assistant chief research monitoring officer. He grew to become the Zono director in various locations with postings to Umwahe, Uyo, Abuja and Lagos. Until his appointment, Professor Idachaba served as the Director of Broadcast Policy and Research. He has published several books on media, digital technology, theatre arts and broadcast regulation and continues to contribute to the Commission's monitoring and research activities. He joins us for a conversation today on the state of broadcasting in Nigeria. Thank you very much for coming to our studios. Thank you, Felicity, for the very inspiring intro. <laughs> You're welcome. It's my pleasure. I know you've done so much more than that, but we had to compress it so we can have more time to actually have a conversation with you. Let's start with a bit about the work that you've done since you assumed office as the DG of the NBC. Well, um, maybe it's right to say um, we hit the ground running. <laughs> mm. uh, soon after I assumed office, uh, I had the the very singular privilege of um, going on, on, on a tour of major industry uh, stakeholders, uh, especially in the hub of the industry. That's talking about Lagos. Um, throughout uh, last week, uh, I was here with the Honorable Minister for Information and Culture, and we met with critical stakeholders, uh, people who produce uh, content for the broadcast industry, those in the filmic industry, um, those who are in the business of monetizing content. Uh, we met with people in the advertising sector. And these are people that are integral and central, you know, to the value of broadcasting in Nigeria. Um, so it's been quite fruitful meeting with them. Um, that aside, I've also concentrated my mind in, um, in implementing in a much more practical term uh, some of the provisions of the reform implementations that were approved by uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari for the broadcast sector. Uh, and we have um, stimulated uh, a chain of events that will bring uh, to the realization or, or, or conclusive implementation of those, um, of those projects. Principally, um, looking at the need to amend uh, some of the provisions of the Broadcasting Act, uh, making uh, major amendments in the Broadcasting Code in a way that um, will be able to reduce tendencies for monopolistic tendencies of people uh, who want to probably take their uh, position to stifle local enterprise within the broadcast sector. Uh, we're also looking at uh, promoting uh, welfare of staff of the commission and um, a few other remarks that will propel or further uh, energize um, the, the, the good fortunes of the broadcast industry in Nigeria. Uh, in, on the internal side, uh, we've been trying to do some 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 bit of um, of re-narrating. You know the, the the philosophy of oneness, of unity, commonality, of purpose of the staff of the commission, uh, in a way that uh, they can harness their potentials together and be truly reflective of a regulatory agency that's founded on the rules of um, fairness, equity. Uh, objectivity and uh, sincerity of purpose. Uh, I think yeah. it's fair to say you have been a very busy man. Very, very busy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's talk about something that's been in the news for quite a while. There was a public hearing recently. Um, it still falls under your purview as a regulatory body. Um, I'm talking about the social media bill. Where do you stand on this? Interestingly, um, uh, the, the, the social media bill and, and, and all the controversy that it has generated, for me, I think it's healthy, you know, for a democratic culture. I mean, once uh, a law is about to, to be promulgated, it is important that uh, uh, it is subject to, to, to diverse views, to pluralism of opinion, uh, so that at the end of the day, you can get a qualitative um, output of what you want to, to come up with. In, uh, and, and, and that way you also are able to build consensus. But on the merits of the bill, uh, I would like to 
express my view with particular uh, tilt towards what, uh, you know, how it can impinge on, on the sector of broadcast. Uh, in the area of broadcasting, um, again, as part of the things we're doing in, in the reform, um, the fact is social media, whether we want or not, has become an important platform for distribution of broadcast content. I mean, the Broadcasting Act in Nigeria mandates the NBC to regulate um, broadcasting uh, through all forms of medium of broadcasting. And um, I think initially the, 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 the feeling because of the, 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 the emergence of social media, some people weren't too clear where to categorize social media, but it has become very, very apparent that the social media is a major, major platform for broadcast content distribution. One fact. Second fact is um, having accepted that it's a major platform for the distribution of content, would it be inappropriate for a country or a people uh, to refuse to look at the direct impacts of what is disseminated through that platform? And the point, Felicity, is that all over the world, people, countries are beginning to get very conscious and very, very interested in, 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 in evaluating for, for, for societal purpose what, what, what transmits from the social media. And I don't think Nigeria should be an exception. You will have also noticed in Nigeria that with all the good advantages of the social media, social interactiveness, reduction of class stratification, speed in news, diversity of content, we are, but we're also faced with other forms of challenges, principally divisiveness, the preaching of hatred, increase in lewd and profane content, you know, and objectively, regulators should sit down to look at it. Now, what is the NBC's approach? NBC actually believes that, yes, Nigerians indeed have a right to, to, to access information. They have a right to freedom of expression. Nobody is going to tamper with us, right? It's guaranteed by the Constitution. But how and what you say, it's also important. Uh, you do not have a right in the guise of freedom of expression, you know, to bring down society or hurt other people in the course of freedom of expression. I mean, uh, that I have freedom of expression does not mean I should impugn your integrity or impugn your culture and background or be insensitive to your religious views. That in itself is trampling on our own freedom. Moving a little away to talk about hate speech, there's been this argument as to what truly constitutes hate speech. I I'll put that question to you now. You know, uh, again, it it's an interesting discussion. And um, all over the world, the basic prompting point uh, regarding whatever must have invigorated the, the discourse is the assumption that, um, depending on who, that the whole philosophy and concept of hate speech, you know, may be interpreted and may be used for reasons that are less than tra transparent. Now, but I, I, I will want you, I want us to understand clearly what is hate. Let's take the discourse from there. Okay. What basically is hate? hate? Hate is a negative tendency, right? When you hate somebody, you attack that person on the base and on the, underline the word attack, right? You attack that person on the basis of the person's race, his color, his opinion, his religion. So it is, it is, it is founded on a prejudiced background or on a prejudiced mindset that prohibits neutrality, that abhors considerate decency, full of vilification, you know, and a tendency to condemn, outrightly spiteful. Now, so you see, hate, hate is not a positive phenomenon. So and that is what hate speech exactly does. If you and I are having a discussion, and we see that on some Nigerian uh, TV and radio stations, you know, and very, very more propounded on social media, somebody posts a tweet, he's making a comment, and his name is Abubakar Suleiman. And the next person said, Don't mind Onyausa, idiots. They are not <laughs> doing anything, they are just eating in Nigeria. You know, no matter how intelligent or how reasonable the person may sound, that his name does not conform with the intellectual expectations of the commentator, then he goes outright to denigrate and deride. 
Now that, that is just one instance. There are times that they say that sometimes the interpretation given to words that are described as hate speech might not necessarily be in, I mean, the intent uh, of that uh, presentation. I agree. I agree entirely that those in power naturally have tendency, especially those that are resistant to criticism, may find it difficult clearly distinguishing between what is a positive, objective criticism and what is hate. But again, if you define your terms clearly as I've done, it's easy to know. President Buhari probably has made a statement, right? And somebody says, well, he made this statement because he's a Fulani man, he's from Northern Nigeria, and doesn't even subject the statement to constructive evaluation. So we need to change that narrative. Um, hate speech is not the same as criticism. Obviously not. And I, I can assure you one thing. In Nigeria, we have about 700 broadcast stations. And I monitor on a daily basis, you know, the interaction, verbal interaction, verbal interrogation and interventions of Nigeria on, on, on early morning, afternoon, and evening programs. We're, there's we're, there's we're a lot of freedom of expression. We're, we're People, definitely going to be talking about that, the multiplicity of broadcasting yeah. outfit and, of course, the welfare of those that work there as well. We'll go on a short break, and when we come back, that and more. Very glad to know you're still with us. We have our guest still with us in the studio uh, talking uh, broadcasting in Nigeria. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us. Uh, let's talk about the uh, people that, um, you know, put this thing out there, uh, the content, so to speak, the journalists that work tirelessly behind uh, the scene. There's always this recurrent issue of uh, remuneration uh, for broadcasters, and they say that um, um, this in at some, most times inadequate and inconsistent remuneration uh, adds to the proliferation of fake news uh, that we see um, in the media space. So my question is, what is the NBC doing to encourage better pay for journalists, especially um, as a way to check, including hate speech, fake news, and unethical practices? Thank you, uh, Felicity. I think that this has been a very uh, reoccurring uh, matter over the time. Um, many broadcasters uh, expect that the NBC uh, should do m much more in, in enhancing their, their, their welfare um, situation. Um, what has the NBC been doing? Um, severally, we get petitions from people who have worked in certain broadcast stations and um, after they leave or they have differences, uh, they write to us and expect that we'll be able to retrieve their allowances. Oh, but, but you see, um, the basic fact is employer-employee relationship is one that's largely private. Uh, we know, for instance, that uh, when people are setting up new broadcast stations, they poach. They go to existing broadcast stations and make mouth-watering offers, <laughs> uh, cars and houses. That is certainly true. Uh, absolutely. And when they do, nobody actually puts NBC in the bargain. We don't, <laughs> yeah. we don't know when this deal is done. It's, done. <laughs> it's when it goes so. Uh... Absolutely. But, but we, have, we have tried to intervene because it is important uh, that uh, workers are well remunerated. Uh, after all, it is within the mandate of the NBC uh, to uphold standards. Um, uh, when people are not paid, the tendency, as you have said, is for them to begin to cut corners, and then they can also get uh, very unethical. Uh, on, a few, on a few occasions, we have, we have invited owners of broadcast stations and uh, talked to them and uh, required from them uh, the need to, to be sensitive to the, to the plight of their workers. Uh, I will give you an explanation one of them gave to us one day. He, he said we should come to his broadcast stations, and if, if, we, if, we, if we were to walk in at the park, we are likely to see heavy SUVs, brand new cars, and that those cars are actually driven by his staff, you know, and that some of them are actually wealthier than him as, a, as the owner of a station. So that the whole story about enumeration may not exactly be true. Uh, of course, I, it is a fact that there are people who have used their brands you know, to, to make themselves, yeah, exactly, yeah. to make themselves also uh, uh, commodified uh, in terms of uh, remuneration. But there are those ones in the lower rung that uh, actually are not brands, but are forced to work day and night, even behind the scene. And I think that they are deserving of their remuneration. But 
But largely speaking, I think um, what happens to the broadcast uh, industry is also part of the, the economy. Uh, just like it's happening in the other sectors, there, are, there may be shifts and pulls, there may be ups and downs. Uh, but we, we mandate uh, we mandate broadcast stations as much as possible um, to live up to to their promises and obligations to their staff. Okay, you mentioned uh, before we went on that break that we have over 700 uh, broadcast um, stations in this country. Um, that is just uh, maybe the ones that are physical. We also have online platforms yeah. as well. How is it that you're able to um, manage all of this? What are some of the challenges that you face in your work uh, to regulate the kind of content that's put out there for Nigerians? I think the biggest challenge to the regulator everywhere, broadcast regulator everywhere, and I'm sure all regulators will say the same, is technology. You know, technology keeps dynamizing, it changes. And um, uh, just as you bring out one technology and the regulator is trying to interpret, you know, another technology surfaces. In this era, we live in the era of OTT, over the top. Broadcasting is going over and above physical boundaries. Uh, people are able to stream and post content uh, beating international physical barriers. So uh, it's a huge challenge because it comes with a plethora you know, of content that is uh, unlicensed, um, unregistered, and um, highly adventurous uh, content. People who do not bother about territorial sensitivities and cultural attitudes of other people, and they just uh, deliver the content. But again, technology also enables you to regulate, um, as we have seen all over the country. Um, there's automated service, even, even on the major social media platforms, Google, Facebook. Uh, we see that uh, platform owners are beginning to use technology to do some form of self-regulation. Uh, these days I hear... Uh, if, you, if you are putting uh, obscene pornographic pictures uh, of a highly graphic level, uh, some of those platforms are, are able to auto-delete, even yes. if you are posting very highly abusive, insensitive comments. So technology is actually assisting you with the work it, exactly, of regulation. Exactly. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, the conversation continues. We'll be looking at digitization, among other issues. Stay with us. The conversation continues with the DG of National Broadcasting Commission, NBC. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time with us so far. Digitization is the new trend. It's been around for a while, not pretty that new. Uh, but we finally got it uh, to some point yeah. um, in 2016 with the launch uh, in JOS, uh, Plateau State. Um, uh, five more states have joined since then. Um, uh, but we have 36 states. Um, where are we now? Great question, and I'm glad you raised the issue of digitization because it's a, it's a national uh, front burner. It's also top priority for, for the National Broadcasting Commission, obviously because of the, the, the myriad of advantages that it, it offers. Where are we? You are you're right on point when you said we're in six states. Uh, we intend to go to the other states quickly. Uh, in the next few weeks, I, I and my colleagues in DigiTeam and uh, industry other industry uh, play, uh, stakeholders and players are, are likely to come out with, um, with a new timetable of action. And um, the good thing is um, all that is required of digital transition is for us to replicate the positives of the six states where we are. Uh, we have a signal uh, uh, distribution pattern online. Um, we're running some national, regional channels on, on the six in the six locations where we are. If you actually pick, pick up um, a set-up box uh, in these six cities, you are likely to find some national, regional channels. Uh, and beauty of it is we have a lot of content producers in Nigeria. Uh, when I met with the content production group uh, last week in Lagos, uh, uh, Obi Asika and uh, Ali Balogun and others, uh, they, 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 they told us that uh, with, with, with the touch of the button, they were willing to release 50 brand new channels, and, and, and that's very, very encouraging. So we have, we have a plethora of content that's available uh, to be released to the market, competitive content, qualitative content, and that is good. But like I said, um, when we have also set-up boxes, uh, manufacturing plants in, in country, uh, 
Yeah, there, there, there are actually um, some issues with that. Can, can you tell us um, a little? Because we know that um, there's what they call them now, uh, corruption watchdog. Yeah. Uh, there was a petition uh, from them uh, that noted that in all the places that the launch took place, including in Joss, mm. that there, there have been some uh, issues. It has not been successfully done. Uh, some were done haphazardly. Um, even the broadcasting organization of uh, uh, Nigeria has um, issued, uh, had a press conference over this matter to urge the commission to come out and tell Nigerians, if the scheme was not a sham, um, how would you react to all of these? Um, obviously, there has been challenges. Yeah, there have been challenges. A lot of obstacles, right? Uh, but not to say it's a sham. As you, as, uh, as, as you alluded earlier, we are, we are up and running in six states. And if you go to any of those six states, you are likely to get uh, free TV um, content. And the scripts is clear digital content. Uh, Perhaps the, the, the problem uh, has been that even in some of those states, we have not been able to get 100% coverage, right? It means that the signals are not distributed across the territories of the state. So which is the next thing we need to do. We need to expand the digital signal content to cover all of those states. And once we do that, we'll go to the level of switching off analog transmission, meaning that um, by the time we gain 95, 98% coverage, of DTT free TV signal in any state will move to the next phase of switching up analog transmitters, meaning that you will now be able to watch TV in those states with your, with your, with your set-top box. Um, so that actually is going on in the next phase. We are, we, we are already talking with, with players in the industry, with stakeholders, with investors in a way that we can renew and, re and, and reinvigorate the process. And the Honorable Minister of uh, Information and Culture uh, Allah Jilai Mohammed is very well committed to, to, to this cause. Okay, where are we with the setup box, really? There's been some um, allusions that it's not in as many homes as it should be um, since it started. Besides, we also hear manufacturers have been owed billions of Naira. Uh, we are not owing manufacturers in the real sense. Uh, the setup box manufacturers, uh, what we did from the beginning was to license 13 of them. That was deliberate. Uh, because we thought it was a way of transferring technology into Nigeria. So we deliberately licensed 13 local companies and charged them with the responsibility of manufacturing those boxes in country. And several of them responded, at least I'm sure about six, who set up plants within the country. One of them is in Calabar, uh, Gospel TV, there's SMK, there's Trephonics. So they've invested heavily and um, they are producing. They are actually producing. Uh, what, what they are waiting for is for the digital signal to go to the other parts of the country. And the assumption is that once the proposition rolls out in other states, then they create an economic, uh, eco economic stimulant, uh, demand and supply, and then they, they will have their boom. So we have the capacity in country uh, to meet the, our national needs for, for set-top boxes. Uh, okay. And uh, in areas where we have launched, uh, there's definitely no no, no complaint about boxes. They are, they are available. Okay, um, I'm told we have limited time, so I'll just skip some of the other questions and go to the fact that Lagos is a hub. I yeah. mean, there is a high um, volume of their capacity to uh, churn out content. Why are we not on the DTT? Great question. Um, again, many people have asked us as regulators, why not Lagos? And we are glad we didn't start from Lagos. Lagos is not a place to Why? experiment. It's not a place to so experiment. It's not, oh, okay, I get that. Much. <laughs> you okay, get the point. Yes, yeah. yes. So, so I think we've had a lot of exper experimentation with the five states where we are, and then we know what the challenges will obviously be for a big market like Lagos. And um, we are, we are. I think we are confident now, right, that we know all we need to do, you know, to have an effective delivery of DTT service in Lagos. So we are prioritizing Lagos. In the next week, Lagos certainly uh, will begin to enjoy DTT signals. Okay, we, we know that um, digitization needs to be done, and we've moved the date severally because we, were, we had our own issues, yeah. uh, multiplicity of them. Yeah. What is the new date for us? What is the new target that we've placed for the digitization in Nigeria? You know, Felicity, you know, you, you know I, I told you a short while ago that in the next couple of weeks, we'll come out with a new timeline. Uh, and that is important for industry and investors. 
Uh, and we want to come up with timelines that are this time a bit more realistic and practicable. So why don't you wait? Can't you give us uh, a an hint? idea, a hint, really? Anyway, let me give you a sneak preview. Uh, we are likely to announce uh, this new timetable um, in the next three weeks. Okay, fair right? enough. And, and, and the, you will hear that uh, we'll be moving to markets like Lagos, Port Harcourt, and Kano, which are the biggest markets. And we hope that uh, we'll be able to take uh, as many 10, 12 states to be delivered by the two signal distributors within the next uh, five, six months. And hopefully before the end of the year, we will have gone even more to more states, trusting on God. Okay, as a final thought, what um, legacy would you like to leave in your time as a DG of the NBC? I would honestly want to leave as my legacy a decent broadcast industry, one that is uh, responsible to the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians, one that will promote political discourse dialogue in a refined manner, one that will ensure that content that is delivered to a vast majority of Nigerians, impressionable and adults, is one that builds a decent and healthy country, one that will encourage dialogue and discourse among Nigerian people, and essentially one that will promote enterprise and economic activity, you know, in a way that uh, our numerous youth will find joy, creative happiness, and fulfillment. I must say thank you very much thank for you. your time thank with you us for on the, the uh, program. I do appreciate it. Yeah. All right, and thank you for watching. It's been an interesting conversation. I hope you can follow more of such conversations on Plus TV Africa. You can watch us on Star Times or find us on YouTube at Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Do take care of yourself and remember basic hygiene in this time of coronavirus. Mm -hmm.